Hey guys, be sure to press like and subscribe. Today we're going to talk about the biggest budget costs. And I'm going to talk a lot about everything in all my budgets pretty much. Okay? Not everything, but the biggest things. Okay? Everything big. A lot of the things that I put in my budgets are a lot different than other people's budgets. And a lot of the other people out there, you know, and I, and I understand they, they live on smaller budgets and... and that's okay. It's okay to live on smaller budgets. But when something happens, those budgets can be, you know, if you don't have a, a savings or what have you, it can be dangerous because if you get stuck in a hospital because you don't have insurance or whatever, you're screwed. You know, and that's why I tell people, I, I have people on here saying that I, I put out a $3,000 budget and I didn't. I put down a two to $3,000 budget. Okay, and I put that out there as, as a safe budget, number one. Number two, it was for, it included like traveling trips. When you're retired, you want to live a little bit. I mean, I know there's people down here that are living on 1500 bucks, and I, I tell people 1500 bucks is fine. That's fine. I even would say that 1250 would be fine, but over a long term, would it be fine? Would 1250 be fine? Probably not. I would say that the $1,500 budget gives you a little bit of room to save money for later on when, you know, Forex changes, things like that, then you're going to be all set, you know. But it's tight. It's not going to last you for 25, 30 years or whatever unless you get COLA raises coming in from Social Security. But your biggest cost down here when you come here, and it depends on which place you want to go to to live, is like if you live in Cebu and you want to live in a high rise, you might be paying anywhere from three to six hundred dollars or more per per month, you know. And depending on on whether it's a luxurious place or whether it's you know not as not that luxurious, you know, it depends what you're you want, you know. But you get what you 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 pay for, you know. And you guys coming over here on the lower budgets are going to be living in places that are going to be cheaper. And probably you're going to be living outside the city a little bit, possibly in a place like me, which is, is good. I, I, I agree with people on that. I think people should get out of the city and live in places like I live. And if you paint it up and you fix it and you throw in air conditioning, you got the same thing that they got in the city that they're paying four to six hundred dollars for in some cases or three to six hundred dollars, you know, and you're doing better, you know. <clears throat> the other costs are insurance. Insurance is, is a big issue over here for a lot of people because a lot of people don't have insurance. Or they have something like TRICARE or something else or, you know, or PhilHealth or whatever. And PhilHealth doesn't c cover everything, okay? And I don't recommend PhilHealth to expats here. I just don't. Unless they're self-insuring and they got 100000 or 50000 in the bank, I don't recommend PhilHealth because PhilHealth does not cover everything. And you don't, in the certain pl parts of the plan that you can't buy, as an expat, so just FYI. Okay, that's why I recommend Pacific Cross. Pacific Cross has a peso plan, which is cheaper. It'll cover you up to a certain extent, you know, but then beyond that, you're on your own. But over here, you don't need really big insurance for health insurance unless you're pretty sick and have heart issues or pacemakers or things like that. You know, then then you're in a different different show all by itself, you know? Um, I would say that, you know, when you get into the dollar, dollar plans, as I call them, the dollar expat plans for insurance, health insurance, you know, like I said, the costs go up. They, they 2000 3000 you know, 1500 for the more expensive plans. And some of them don't cover a lot of things. So you want to make sure that you get covered in what you need, you know, and some of them might not cover prescriptions or something like that, or they might leave out something. So make sure that you get covered for what you need. You know, you guys know what you need. Get covered for that. Some of these plants won't pick you up for a whole year because they're waiting to, you know, they, they, they want to find out what you have. If you have something that maybe you didn't tell them or whatever, okay? And they they wait a year. Pacific Cross is a little bit like that. They're going to really wait a year before they start paying for big issues. They'll pay for some stuff, but for some stuff they won't. So the first year is almost like wasted. So you kind of ha have to kind of self-insure during that time, okay? Even though you're paying, 
they'll cover some stuff, but if they think that you had it before, they won't cover it. You know, so just FYI. But if you get in a, like a accident or something, you broke your arm, you go into the hospital, yeah, they'll cover that. You know, things like that. But you have to be careful. You have to really be careful about what you get for insurance. You know, because you want to, like I said, you want to make sure you're fully covered. You want to make sure you have outpatient and inpatient. I have currently right now just inpatient. I am going to buy the outpatient. I had it before I got rid of it because it, I just found it was so cheap. And then I realized that when you go into an emergency room, unless they admit you, you're outpatient. So I had a, a, a huge outpatient cost. It wasn't huge, but it was it was a little costly. But, I, you know, I had the money to cover it because I have my emergency money and I have, you know, have extra. That's why it's a good safety net to have a bigger budget, guys. I mean... It just is, you know, because you, you, you can save, you have money on the side, you, you have a little bit of money in the bank, you have a little bit of cushion in your pocket all the time. You know, it's just nice to have a little bit of extra in your pocket all the time, walking around, being able to, to jump on an a airplane right away to, to get out of here if you have to. A lot of guys don't have those options because of their budgets. And that's why I talk about the more expensive budgets and say two to three thousand is the best budget. The sweet spot, sweet spot's a good spot to be in. It's a happy place, you know. I mean, it's not. I'm not telling people everybody has to live on two to three thousand dollars. You don't. I mean, I know you can go out to the provinces and you can live on a lot less. You can live on less than a thousand, or you can you can live around five or six, seven hundred dollars if you wanted to. And there are people here doing it. But it's just not a safe budget to have over here because of the fact that, and we, we talk about this all the time, because of emergencies, because of sicknesses, because if you have to get up and go, those guys can live cheaper way out in the provinces, but they're not living a Western lifestyle with Western foods and things like that. They have, there's a lot of adjustment that goes on to live in the provinces. And I'm, I'm just telling you outright, it's a different lifestyle. You know, it's a lot dirtier, it's grungier in some places. You know, um, the, t the, the, the amenities aren't, aren't the same, the toilets are different, the housing is different. The way of life is different. It's just not, it's very difficult for a Westerner to jump from a Western lifestyle into that. And I'm not saying it's a bad lifestyle, I'm just saying it's a different lifestyle. Okay, so that's, that's basically what I'm trying to say. You know, other costs around here that you're going to run into is going to be electricity. Everybody over here wants to have at least one AC. It's a must. It's almost a must. Um, there are expats that say, I don't need AC. Okay, then you don't need it. You're, you're probably used to living in Florida or something like that, and this is okay for you, and, and, and that's all right. But if, you, if, you, if you're a Westerner and you like living decent in a two- or three-bedroom home or apartment or whatever, yeah, you're probably going to need two ACs or you're going to need a, a larger AC. Your electricity is probably going to charge, I mean, cost you anywhere from 100 to 150, maybe even a little bit more, but probably not, okay? If you shut it off at night and if, or if you live like in a place like Tagaytay Tai or you live in Baguio, you're not going to need all that stuff. You're not going to need AC, you know, in Tagaytay Tai or in Baguio because it's cool at night. You're probably just going to need it during the day. You know, because it gets a little warm still during the day in Tagai Tai and in, in, in Baguio too. Now, the other thing that we're going to talk about for budgets: <coughs> if you're traveling around and you're you're running around the Philippines a lot, and you you like to travel, you like to see things. That's another reason that I tell people it's gonna it's your budget can get costly because you're flying to Palawan maybe for a week to do a trip. You got to pay for things. You have to pay for your room. You have to pay for your Airbnb or whatever. You have to pay for your plane ride. You have to pay for the, you know, the ride, the tricycle ride to the resort or to the Airbnb or whatever, and for food, you know, because you're going to be living at restaurants a lot probably. You know, you're going to be eating at restaurants all the time. So you got to pay for those things. You know, these lower budgets, um, some people, it's like a challenge with them, you know, and it's a challenge that, I wouldn't want to accept, you know, because I, I like different, living different than that. I understand that a lot of people are on Social Security and they don't have big budgets. That's okay. That, that's, that's for you then. You know what I mean? 
But you do have to have health insurance, guys. You do have to have a, a, a some sort of of um, emergency fund. You have to have a startup fund. You have to have all that stuff. These are the big costs, the budget buses. I tell people, you come over here without those, you, you're you're in trouble. If you come over here without a startup fund, and you come over here without an emergency fund, and you're pretty healthy, and you're coming over here with two thousand five hundred or three thousand dollars a month. That will give you the extra money to save for your emergency fund, and you can buy your stuff slowly, your startup stuff slowly, like your bed, your refrigerator, stuff like that. You can, you can, you could do it that way. Just do it slowly. Start out slowly. You'll be fine. You know, just make sure you put some in your emergency fund, some towards all your startup costs, and by the end of the year, you'll have all the stuff that you you need. You know, maybe even earlier than that. It's you know, each each person's different. They can, they, you know, you can twist these budgets around and all that stuff. And, you know, I've had so many people, you know, come on and get nasty with me on my budgets and stuff like that. Remember, guys, I said you could live on fifteen hundred dollars, and I had lower budgets before, by the way, but I took those off because now that I've been here, I've got it all. You know, I've kind of figured out things a little bit more, and I took some of those older budgets off. Because I just didn't feel it was safe. I didn't feel that I was doing anybody any justice by leaving those on here. I just took I took them off. I'm not sure if I I think I got them all. If anybody sees any older budgets on there, like like living to below a thousand, let me know and I'll take them up. But I think I got them all. But anyway, twelve fifty, you could do it, but. If you were saving your 250 and you used that for like forex and you were living on a thousand, you were living cheap, and you could live pretty good on that. You could, you could, you could make it. But like I said, 1500 is the, like the lowest. I really, really recommend. I have told people yeah, 1250 is okay if you're living out in, in the provinces or if you're living in my area. If you're living in my area, it's pretty easy. We've got a hornet going around here. But anyway, if you live in my area, you, you're fine, you know, and you could live on 1250. And probably live pretty decent. Actually, you could live pretty decent, and you could probably save some money too. But to come over here on 1250 without a startup fund or without an emergency fund, no. That's why I tell people the two to three thousand. Come over here, have a little bit of maybe have a little bit of an emergency fund or something, or have credit cards or something like that that you can use to pay the hospital, like maybe ten thousand dollars worth of credit cards or a little bit more. Yeah, then you're you're, you're getting safer, you know. Got this hornet flying around me. I don't know what this problem is, but anyway, that's part of the Philippines, guys. But anyway, that's. I just want to talk about that, guys. That, you know, the 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 big the big things here are are those your housing, everything else, food and stuff like that. Food's getting more expensive over here. That's another thing that can can run up over the years and catch up with you when you're on a smaller budget and you're thinking you're going to stay here for twenty or thirty years, guys, because. That's what I worry about. That's why I say the bigger budgets are better. You gotta be ready for all these costs. You have to. Cost of living's going up, and it's going up fast all throughout the world, you know. And they're pumping money like like crazy, and it's devaluing devaluing the dollar and all these other currencies that are out there. They're all just dropping down. So. Just consider that, guys. That's why I talk about Forex. I'm probably, I've been told I'm the only guy that does talk about the Forex and does talk about inflation out there, okay? There's a reason why I talk about Forex. Forex is a big thing over here because your dollar goes up and down and it can drop. I've already lost 10, 12% since I've got here, you know? And that's, that's a lot. It's a lot for me. You know, have I made it up other ways? Yeah, I have. I've been fortunate that I've had some other stuff kick in, and that helped me. You know, otherwise I would have been in trouble. Not too much trouble, but a little bit. I would have had to cut back a little bit. And you don't want to have to cut back when you get adjusted to live into a certain standard, especially when you're retired. You know, nobody wants to be retired and, and have to keep on lowering your budget or your lifestyle. It's not fun, you know, by the time you hit 80 and you're living on, you know, rice and beans or Campbell's soup or macaroni and cheese or something like that, which most of those things they don't have over here, but, but you get the idea what I'm trying to say. But anyway, guys, God bless, take care, and 
Guys, leave your comments down below. I'd like to hear what you what you think, you know, because this here is not, like I said, it's not a video really about, you know, living on a higher budget. It's just a recommendation. Okay, guys? But God bless. Take care. And I'd like to hear what you guys have to say. Thanks, guys.